For nearly six decades, Outdoor School Outward Bound has been helping Kiwis reach their full potential through experiencing Aotearoa's great outdoors. The goal is to create better people, better communities and a better world. One of the things that we try to instill in our participants at Outward Bound is very much resilience and it's okay to fail because from failure comes success. Recently, the school has developed adaptive courses so that those living with a disability can also benefit from the experience. I hate MS. The whole world is like shaking so much right now. Teamwork is a big thing here. Positive attitude and positive self-talk. And by the time everybody goes away, they are thinking that they are enough. I just think that's so important in society. It's February, and a group of people living with physical disabilities has just arrived to start the Activate course. Over the next few days, they'll be learning and living together on site. Come on down. I'm going to make a bit of a circle. Because Outward Bound started as a training school for sailors, each group is known as a watch, like a crew on a ship. You find everything you needed. We've got them figured out now. At the start, students get sorted into their watch, and then one second after that, the Outward Bound course is on. Uh, so I think it's supposed to be a little bit jarring for that reason. And now, as a team, we need to find out what you're actually capable of. So one of the first things that crews do out here at Outward Bound is a thing called under, over, through. So if you start with somebody going under, and then you go with somebody goes over, and then somebody goes through, then you've got to stay in that order. I'll let you guys have a discussion. I'll Up to you. Through. I'm still I'll totally go, confused. I'll go first. I'll go underneath. <laughs> okay. Everyone brings different strengths to a watch and to a challenge, and we specifically design the challenges that you pretty much can't do them unless you draw upon everyone's strengths. So if you're not utilising the people you've got around you and you're not getting along with them, then this is going to be a very difficult place to be. Who, who wants to try go, go over? I'll try go over. Well, just the ultimate the challenge, challenge is not to touch the ropes, that might be taking the, uh, touching the rope a little bit too far, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so far, the group don't seem to have much of a plan. Yeah. No, it's too slippery. Okay. So I'll just leg over. Um, you all right there? Colin. Colin. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Let's, um, let's have another little bit of a circle up here. OK. We've got a lot of individual people trying to do individual things here. Okay, That's good. not going to work. So it is team. It is. This is not team. designed to be an individual thing. You cannot do this by yourself. That's why I think we... Isn't order. the over one the hardest? Yes. Yeah, so yes. we need to... Yeah, I think yeah. we need to work okay. that one out first. Taking an early leadership role is Donna Lang. Now I have retinitis pigmentosa, which is tunnel vision. It's a hereditary disease and it's degenerative, so it starts with night blindness and then your vision goes in slowly and you also get little bits of, it's almost like somebody's shooting holes into your sight, but mostly here. So I've got no vision at all around here and I have just a tiny vision um, that I can see through, like looking through a telescope. I just have one of those, please. Yeah. Everything I do I have to plan, I have to really consider. Is it going to be safe? Am I going to need extra help? I had quite a few falls. I just recovered from a sprained wrist. I had broken a toe. Um, I think uh, yeah, I had damaged my cheekbone, and, and I think I just took the risk out of my life. Yeah, yeah, that was I'm big, heavy to go over. Yeah, okay. So, you, so I would better go over. I lost my spontaneity, and I think that's why I spontaneously apply to do Outward Bound. You'll have to tell me if I'm near it. You're good. You're all good. You're all good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, my Keep pants going. are coming off. Stop no, they're not. Oh, they're fine. They're, off. they're fine. Almost there. You're almost there. Oh. Keep going a little bit more. Oh. A little bit more. A oh. little bit more. Oh. Yep, you're good now. The team have hatched a plan to use Finn's wheelchair to help them climb over the ropes. Yep. It seems to be doing the trick. Sort of. Yeah, so just yeah. sort of balance me, just yeah. 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 Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Nice, you got it? Lovely. Yeah, yeah, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Woo! <laughs> All right. But is it up to scratch? Well done. I'm gonna make a call ago that it wasn't incredibly slick at all. And I think you can do a much better job of it. 
Before you start as well, just throw something else in there. Do you know what an introvert is? It's a person that doesn't really always want to talk in big spaces in front of people, and sometimes they've got very good ideas. Teenager Cam Holmes is the youngest member of the group. I'm 18 years old and I have cerebral palsy. I have high tone in all four of my limbs. My right hand side is slightly more affected than the left and my right hand is probably the most affected. So it's harder to do things such as tying my laces or gripping onto things. Well, you need to get organised yep, for next week. So mm -hmm. what's on the list? And I'll write down what we need. School was certainly interesting for the first few years, and I was different to everyone else. I just couldn't necessarily do all the stuff that my mates were doing. I couldn't run around as much as them. I couldn't climb trees and go swimming. Living in a, a small town, I think that is one of the downsides, is that he didn't have opportunity to mix with other people with disabilities. And that's why I'm really excited about him going to Outward Bound, because he'll be mixing with all sorts of different people. I know they're timing us better for a wee bit, uh, take a little wee bit more time. Overall, I think we'd be able to get over it quicker. Mm. I'd definitely like to get out of my comfort zone a little bit more and to have a bit more resilience. And so hopefully doing this course will help me realise I can do a lot more than I actually realise. Because then we can use his wheelchair as a step for yes. later. Yep. And, and what, sorry to interrupt, yeah, what section of the rope are you planning to go through, Finn? Yeah. Three, two, one, <laughs> timer is on. <laughs> the second time around, the team are a smooth operation. Yeah, we've got to stay low, stay low. Yeah, nice, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, all good. Nice. Ready, three, two, one, go. Nice. Five, five, five. Where are the faster? You smashed that half your time, one minute, 13 oh, seconds. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's well enough, done. Guys. Now that they've bonded as a team, it's down to the water where the group are about to find out their next challenge, including guide dog, Kenzie. Remember Kenzie, not only is she a very yeah. beautiful dog, but yeah. she's a very expensive dog as well. I've had Kenzie, my guide dog, for three years. It costs $30,000 to train a guide dog. I didn't realise how good it would be. It's kind of like comparing riding on a skateboard to driving in a Merc, using my cane to Kenzie. Yeah, Kenzie is the first guide dog that's been on this course. And my feeling is that if I say it's OK, she'll do it with me, because her and I have got a close bond. And if she trusts me and I trust her, you know, we can do these things together. The group have been told their next challenge is on the water. First, though, they must each pass a swim test. We're going to make sure people are OK in the water, so we threw everyone off the jetty. Once everyone's in, we're going to do two minutes through the water. It's a nervous moment for Donna. OK, will she go in? Oh, I don't know, to be honest. Okay. I have never jumped off a pier, so that was kind of fun. Oh, here we go. Oh, my God! <laughs> I'm not a great water baby. I don't particularly like not being able to see underneath me. If you're swimming along and you go, oh, something touched me, something touched me. Guide dog Kenzie has never seen Donna jump into water before. I was intrigued about what Kenzie would do. <laughs> She's worried that Donna needs her help, but isn't too keen on the water herself. She got a fright, I think, when she jumped in after me and got a heck of a fright, and I faced her back to the pier, and she swam back and didn't want to try again. Good girl, Kenzie. Now she'll shake. <laughs> Being with the group is helping Donna's confidence in the water. I no problem with the water, um, but it was more just the cold. <laughs> it was cold. The cold is not such an issue for hardened South Islander Cam. 
It wasn't even cold, so it was quite nice and warm. I'm normally pretty confident on the water, so it didn't really phase me much at all. The, the other part of the swim test is uh, 20 metre swim. Yeah. It's just from one end of the day to the other. For safety, the instructors need to check that each member of the watch can tread water for two minutes and swim to shore if they need to. Well done, everyone. That is a completed swim test. Right. Congratulations, well done all around. With a successful swim test done, the watch can head to the beach to find out what's in store for them. The famously changeable weather of the Marlborough Sounds is closing in. All right, here we are. But the group has been tasked with building a raft. So how long will it take for you guys to come up with a plan on what your raft's going to be built like? 40 minutes. I'm going to really ramp up the pressure here for your group work. And I'm going to say you have a five minute planning phase where you can look at the materials but you can't begin construction. Uh, this craft you must convey the, the entire watch out around the, the orange mooring ball and back. Oh, right. you're, just, you're just building the raft. Right. Okay. It seems no one knows where to start. So we just need to make quick decisions, don't we? So the wood through those holes. Yep. So Suddenly, there are ideas flowing everywhere. Yeah. 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 On either side, and we lash, and lash, lash two together, together so that yeah. they stay together. For solo yeah, dad Dave, being in control has been important in his life. Time really is one of the biggest ones as a solo dad. What do you reckon about helping me mix up the pancakes, Molly? It's always busy. There's always the cleaning up and making sure that the wheels keep rolling. Sure. I'm currently living with multiple sclerosis and also a condition called MED, multiple epiphyseal dysplasia. That's where all the ends of my bones are slightly the wrong shape. So just my joints don't quite fit quite right. MS causes me uh, quite a, a bit of stuff. My phone motor skills are lacking a little bit. I struggle drinking, particularly my right hand is very shaky, so when I have a, a drink of tea, my hand will like, go like that quite a lot. Your 15 minute build time starts now. Put another board on top and make board it on yeah. What do you reckon? Cam has an idea, but is struggling to get his voice heard. I'm a little bit more of an introvert, definitely, generally. Despite his shyness, Cam knows his practical farm skills can help. This board's quite long. Is there any smaller one? There's one behind you there. If you tie that end off, Dave. Dave, though, has his own ideas. I'm just... I had another plan, actually. For myself, I'm a little bit extroverted, but the, it's sort of more learned and, and put on in a lot of ways. My, my life has sort of taken that, that course that I sort of have to be able to speak up. The team doesn't have long to get it all together. 10 minutes has just passed. I need an end and I need it untangled and I need someone to help me with that. Yep, thank you. Should we do a figure eight around that? Yeah, yeah. Time is up for the build. First of all, let's just go back and look at that planning stage. How did that go? Everything is back. We did what we did at the start of the other ropes thing and we just did some individual stuff. I thought we planned quite well at the beginning. Oh, okay. It's a bit different when we push the pressure up a bit higher, eh? Like, yeah, if you ask, ask for 20 minutes of planning and get five, suddenly, like, it's quite easy to be shaken back. Did everyone's voice get heard? I'm going to say no. I may have not felt comfortable saying their voices when everyone else was talking, and I think next time we definitely need to plan like we did the last time when we did the vote and make sure everyone's heard. One of the key differences we think about with introverts and extroverts is an extrovert tends to start talking and then start thinking. And an introvert tends to do all their thinking and then start talking about it. So they've already got a plan in their head. Um, just something to keep in mind when it comes to that planning phase, just to make sure that those ideas are coming out. 
the times where they need to. And if someone has been quiet for a few minutes, they've probably come up with a damn fine idea that would be nice to get out of their heads and into the group as well. After Harley's pep talk, Cam now has the group's attention. And left up the middle of the bottom one. Right, right. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Oh, my God. Are we right? Are we good? Yep. They, they've actually worked really well together and they've built an absolutely beautiful raft that's holding together better than a lot that I've seen built before. The raft is ready to go. Now there's just the small matter of getting everybody on. The team are placing themselves to work with each other's strengths. I'm left handed. Oh, okay. I only got one arm. Or at least that's what they're hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 yeah. It held together really well, and it held everybody in place just perfectly, aside from myself. Oh, my God, sorry. Oh, right, got it. Oh. Dave is being confronted with his balance issues, a symptom of MS. One twice it rolls so much, this one. That was built with some sort of big barrel type things, and my one uh, just rolled a little bit. It rolled me into the middle of the raft, but then I couldn't paddle with the oar, so I tried to sit up straight, but then it rolled me right off. So uh, there were a couple of times that, until we sort of got me sorted, that I took a bit of a dunk. Once everyone's on board, they aim for the orange boy across the inlet. But once again, they've set off without a plan. Right now, Shepherd Watch on their freshly built raft haven't quite made it out to sea. They're, they're battling against the wind and mostly against each other. I haven't yet seen the whole watch paddle the same direction at the same time. And as a result, they've found themselves beached in December. So, uh, yeah, perfect opportunity for them to start figuring it out, really. At Outward Bound, Shepherd Watch are still battling to make any headway on their raft. I have to admit, not much has changed. They seem to still be at the whim of the wind. And we've changed the goalposts a little bit, so they're gonna be coming ashore at this island over here. We've got a bit of a challenge because the wind's blowing them away from the island, so they just have to, yeah, figure out how to paddle across the wind from here. Oh my God, I'm so proud of us. <laughs> Finally, the team manages to get the raft traveling in the right direction. Am I against someone's back? There. Is that okay? And they reach their destination. Well done. The goalposts are obviously moved a bit for that journey, but you proved the seaworthiness of your craft. But it's not over yet. What you've got now, though, is an additional challenge. Because you've taken the raft from its start line to yeah. here, but the raft does need to return to the start line. Sticking with our theme of the day, which is in being an effective team, my suggestion is that you take a couple of minutes, come up with a great plan on how you're going to get this raft and the equipment back to the start line, and then do. Drag it through the water this shallow round of the day. With everyone now tired, rowing the raft back against the tide is not even on the table. Yeah, we could take it all apart and take the wood, some of the slightly stronger people could take the wood because that might be heavier with all the wet. But that's up to you guys. Just an idea. Why don't we try dragging it through the shadow, shallows? Okay. Because then we can take it apart, but we can't put it back together yeah. once we've done it. Yeah, it goes thing thing. Yeah. Chris, we've got another person now. Would you like to jump on and get it right? This time, the watch are working together more as a team. But feeling fatigued, Donna drifts away from the group up the beach. Everything you do here is physical. I've got an office job, so for me, I don't mind going for the walk in the morning and doing the exercise, and then I'm just like, right, I'm just going to sit down and <laughs> sit in front of the computer or sit with a client. But it's like, no, let's go and build a raft and set sail out in the bay. She seems to have started a trend, but instructor Harley has other ideas. Guys, I would 
throw the thought out there that if you have the capacity to help your watch to achieve a difficult task, they would appreciate that help. What's that mean? It means that they're dragging a raft while you're walking along the seashore. Because you're supposed to just start looking at yourself, and, and so I certainly am starting to do that, and I've recognised that when things get tough, I want to take over and or give up. I started to get really tired with the raft at the end, but then I just had to suck it up, buttercup, just put my head down and just grind into it. Yeah, I'm quite chuffed that I did that. Ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. At the end of a long first day, the watch gather for a debrief. How's today? Good. Good. Awesome. Good. Really good. Cool. Awesome. Oh, that was good. Challenging. Good. Challenging. Good. Challenging. Yeah. Highlight for the day and hurdle for the day. Falling in twice. Was that the, was, was the highlight? Yes. And yeah. hurdle for the day was the rock that took my knee out for a bit. Someone was actually um, rowing against us. I don't know who that was. <laughs> 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 Can I just show you? Oh, so that out. Yeah. The highlight is probably the pride I felt at the end of the day. I expected us to go in the drink and <laughs> it would fo float apart and we'd have to try and rescue all these boys. And, but we didn't just get to the end. We got to the end with a boat that was still <laughs> hard to pull to bits. Hurdle, a lot of the hurdles that you had were to do with the raft not getting to where you needed to get it to. And it, it was not the point of the raft building, was it? You know, It's all that other stuff of you guys working together as a team. If, if it had been the easy sailing, we might not have had the lessons mm. learned that we did. Yeah, I think Cam deserves a mention, an honourable mention too, because he kept us together and he wouldn't let us mm. give up until we were told that we should give up. <laughs> well, I got told, I got, I remember the messages to saying never, never, never give up, so yeah. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Sir Ken, Sir oh, Dad. Sir Dad. Okay. <laughs> You've been knighted. Oh. <laughs> they get along really well. They have a really cool, almost family feel in the watch. They're very trusting and they're very willing to be vulnerable with each other and I think we're set for a really good week. For this tired but happy watch, the Outward Bound experience has only just begun. Everyone's hoping they get a good sleep before tomorrow's new challenges.